Hello everybody, my name is Graham Elwood and you are watching The Political Vigilante. So last week, I'm sure many of you saw the Prince Andrew interview. Prince Andrew uh, has not been just linked to Jeffrey Epstein. On his plane, on his island, in his house, Virginia Roberts, uh, in a sworn deposition, said Prince Andrew uh, raped her when she was a child. So I'm going to go through that interview. It's about 50 minutes long. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but there's a couple quick uh, key excerpts here to show you why why would Prince Andrew come forward? Why would the royal family allow this? Well, here's what they're trying to do. Cover their tracks. It's all about him covering his tracks. Distance, saying, first he's distanced himself from Epstein. You'll see him go, oh, the royal family had nothing to do with this. And then try to tell, oh, it was all Jalene Maxwell, right? This is, this is what this is all about. Yeah. The royal family absolutely knew what was going on. They knew and they've been involved in pedophiles and sex trafficking probably for centuries. <laughs> I, I don't trust the royal family at all. They are filthy. They are the, the tip of the ruling class spear. But Ep Epstein it wasn't just the British royal family. It was the Saudi royal family. Any powerful per person that was a pedophile probably came in contact with Jeffrey Epstein. So I just want to show you um, this was taken in whatever, one of the palaces. Let's listen here, and I'm gonna interject whenever. Uh, now, I'm gonna warn you, you're gonna wanna put on some waders and, and boots if you ever do fly fishing, because you're gonna be wading through uh, a river of bullshit. Here it comes. He was your guest as well. In 2000, Epstein was a guest at Windsor Castle and at Sandringham. He was brought right into the heart yes, of the but, royal family at your but, invitation. But uh, certainly at my invitation, not at the royal family's invitation. So there we go. First distancing, my invitation, not the royal family. So the royal family had nothing. The royal family probably pulled them aside and said, you better distance us from this or we're going to hang this on you. Right? So there's a lot of people scurrying around because of what happened with Epstein. Because people keep talking about it. And now Epstein didn't kill himself is trending. <laughs> so just listen closely. There's more of this. But remember that it was his girlfriend that was the key element in this. He was the, as it were, plus one to some extent. It oh, oh, okay, okay. So now we're seeing we had nothing to do with the, the, the Buckingham Palace knew nothing about this. And I didn't really know him. It was Jalene Maxwell's friend. You see how this could work, right? Like, so I'm not a member of the royal family. I'm not crazy famous, but I'm a public figure. I meet a lot of people. Ron Placone and I were just on tour. So if someone were to accuse me of, of something I did not do, like, Graham, you, you assaulted this person, molested this person, whatever, I'd say, no, there's no way. And they go, well, here's a photo. I'd say, well, I, I take photos with people after every show. Oh, I can't possibly remember every single person I take a photo with. Could I have taken photos in all my years of being a comedian with somebody that's a criminal or something? Absolutely. So that's what he's trying, that's the, that's the angle he's trying to play, right? We've all taken photos with someone at a party. They see, I hung out with them at a party. They seemed cool. Who knew later they were this awful criminal? That's the angle he's trying to play, but sorry, brother. This isn't just some like one time bumped in, but oh, Jeffrey Epstein was a plus one. So he's putting it on Maxwell. So Jalene Maxwell, we know, and this whole interview never mentions how Virginia Roberts said Jalene Maxwell, um, Virginia, Virginia Max, uh, Jalene Maxwell, in a, in a, Virginia Roberts in a sworn deposition, <laughs> which is like under perjury. If you, in a sworn deposition, if you lie in a deposition, you're perjuring yourself and you can face very serious consequences. She said Jalene Maxwell raped and trafficked her. So we know Jalene Maxwell is a pedophile and a sex trafficker. So he's trying to say, oh, is Jalene's, Jalene's my friend. 
So we're, but we're not even really getting into how awful Jolene is. So you see how this works? How they're already sh just moving the narrative away here? In, in, you, that, in that aspect? Am I right in thinking you, you threw a, a birthday party um, for Epstein's girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, at Sandringham? No, it was a shooting weekend. A shooting weekend. Just a straightforward, straightforward shooting weekend. Oh! <laughs> this is the rich, rich ruling class. Oh, it wasn't a party. It was just a shooting weekend. Okay, dude, I don't care. You invited a bunch of pedophile sex traffickers to some type of rich asshole event. I don't care if it was shooting or a... <laughs> Does that make me believe you more? Oh, if it wasn't a birthday party, it was just a shooting event. So you and your pedophile buddies went out and shot animals and killed... You murdered Dan. Great. That's why I'm a vegetarian. But during these times that he was a guest at Windsor Castle at Sandringham, uh, the shooting weekend, yep. Yep. we now know that he was and had been procuring young girls for sex trafficking. We now know that. At the time, there was no indication to me or anybody else that that was what he was doing. And certainly, when I saw him either in the United States, well, no, when I saw him in the United States, or when I was staying in his houses in the United States, there was no indication, absolutely no indication. And if there was, you have to remember that at the time, um, I was patron of the NSPCC's Full Stop campaign, so I was close up with what was going on in those um, uh, time about getting rid of abuse to, to children. So I knew what, was, what, the, what the things were to look for, but I never saw them. So you would have made that connection because you stayed with him, you were a visitor, a guest on many occasions. I want to point this out. I want to be very clear here. There are a lot of organizations out there that are trying to help kids and adults who are now adults who were trafficked or molested or, uh, you know, uh, sexually abused. There's a lot of organizations out there that are trying to help kids and they're, they're doing good work. They're good people who have their hearts in the right place who are doing good work. Some of them are actually run by pedophiles. You remember Jerry Sandusky at Penn State University did these summer, you know, for disadvantaged kids. He preyed upon those disadvantaged kids because disadvantaged kids are less likely to speak up. Okay? When I interviewed um, Eric Oldenburg, child crimes investigator, if you check, I have a Jeffrey Epstein playlist, and one of them is an interview with the child crimes investigator. One of the things he told me is like, Graham, you take 100 kids that were abused. I, he goes, I guarantee you 98, 99 of them came from disadvantaged homes because they didn't have the love, the affection, whatever. And it's easier to do that. Jolene Maxwell had this save the, some bullshit Save the Oceans Foundation that they would use kids. Jeffrey Epstein's modeling agencies would snatch up girls. 13, 14 year old girls, and we're gonna make you models. We're gonna make you famous. You wanna be on the cover of Vogue? They'd get snatched up, and if the girls were from poor families, it was easier to do, and Jeffrey Epstein actually laughed about that. He joked about that, how these parents in France let him fly their children to New York and to his island or whatever, and he laughed about it because he just gave them some money. He took advantage of people. So I just wanna be clear. Can, do I have evidence that the organization that Prince Andrew worked for was a front to traffic and, and abuse children. I don't know that for certain, but I want to point that out. And I don't want to, like, any, any organization, anyone helping, trying to help kids is guilty. Don't, let's not do that either. There's a lot of people doing really good work helping kids, and, but let's be clear here. I believe Virginia Roberts. I'm just gonna say that. Do I have a bias on this show? Yeah, I do. I believe Virginia Roberts. I don't believe this rich asshole. ...at his homes, mm. and nothing no. struck you as suspicious? No. Nothing. During that whole time? Nothing. 
Just for the record, you've been on his private plane. Yes. You've been to stay on his private island. Yes. That island, and again, it's on my Epstein playlist. There's drone footage showing that island. It is creepy. There's this weird circular ritual looking thing. There's this like uh, where the dock is, it goes right to this like underground. It's, it looks horrifying. It doesn't look like a regular rich, there's not like tennis courts and beach volleyball and all the other things a rich person would have, just fun toys for rich. It's like weird, creepy, ritualistic shit. So if you went to that island, you're guilty, man. You're guilty. I'm sorry. You were invited to some big event at one of his mansions, even the New Mexico one. I could understand like I was invited to one of his events. He was bringing together a bunch of scientists. Oh, okay, you know, if I didn't know anything about somebody and there was just a billionaire said, Graham, we want you to come. We'll fly you to this thing, we'll put you up. It's this thing about independent media and we wanna maybe, we're looking to donate to independent media people. I would go, okay, sure, if I didn't know who the person was. So, so that's one thing. But on his plane numerous times and to his island, guilty. Our boy Andy's guilty. Watch him lie some more. You stayed at his home in Palm Beach. Yes. You visited Gillen Maxwell's house in Belgravia in London. Yes. So in 2006, in May, an arrest warrant was issued for Epstein for sexual assault of a minor. Yes. In July, he was invited to Windsor Castle to your daughter, Princess Beatrice's 18th birthday. Why would you do that? Because I was asking Gillen. <laughs> hey, Gillen, you can come to my wedding. I mean, I, you know, what am I going to tell her not to bring her pedophile sex trafficking boyfriend? That would just be rude. This is like the Clinton when Jolene Maxwell, two years after she settled out of court with Virginia Roberts, was invited to Chelsea Clinton's wedding. You honestly trying to tell me the Clintons didn't know? Chelsea Clinton, you know, her dad who was on Epstein's plane 26 times. But even so, at the time, I don't think I, um, certainly I wasn't aware when the invitation was issued what was going on in the United States. And I wasn't aware until, until the media picked up on it because he never said anything about it. He never discussed no, with you the fact that, it. that an arrest warrant had been issued. No. So he came to that party knowing police were investigating him. Well, I'm not quite sure whether it was it police that were... I don't know. You see, this is the problem. It was the Palm really Beach police at the time. But I mean, I'm afraid, you see, this is the problem, is that an awful lot of this was going on in the United States and I wasn't a party to it and I knew nothing about it. In 2008, he was convicted of yep. soliciting and procuring a minor for prostitution. He was jailed. This yes. was your friend. How yes. did you feel about it? Well, clarify. Jailed is a loose term. Uh, he was allowed furlough. He was allowed to be gone most of the day because uh, Acosta gave him a sweetheart deal at the behest of the federal government. Just to clarify. Well, I ceased contact with him after uh, I was aware that he was um, under investigation, and that was later on in, in 2006. And I wasn't in touch with him again until 2010. So um, I just, uh, it just, it was one of those things that if somebody's going through that sort of thing, well, I'm terribly sorry, I can't be... Um, so no contact? No contact. Uh, when, when he was serving time, there was no, no. call, no letter, no. nothing no. there? No. He was released in July, within months, by December of 2010. You went to stay with him at his New York mansion. Why? Why were you staying with a convicted sex offender? Right. I have always, uh, ever since this has happened, and since this has become, um, as it were, public knowledge that I was there, I've questioned myself as to why did I go, uh, what was I doing, and was it the right thing to do? Now, I went there with the sole purpose of saying to him that because he had been convicted, it was n inappropriate for us to be seen together. <laughs> it was inappropriate 
for us to be seen together. Notice he didn't go, when I found out my friend was convicted of having sex with a child, with, I was like, oh my God, this guy's awful. You're not the friend I thought you were. That's what you say. You were truly blindsided, right? You were truly blindsided by somebody who was leading a double life. You were good friends with somebody and oh man, it was so cool. I never saw any signs of this. And then, oh my God, I found out they, would, they had done these awful things. That's what you would say. Not it's inappropriate to be seen with you. So that just means he's worried about his image. Not that what Jeffrey Epstein did was wrong. Do you see that clarification of language? I'll give you an example. I was never great friends with Louis C.K. I knew him. I did shows with him. I did a couple shows with him. I knew him the way I know dozens of comedians. If I ran into him, I'd say, hey, how you doing? I don't even think, no, I didn't have his phone number. I never hung out with him socially, like just one-on-one. -on -one. There was like a volleyball game we played at once, a beach volleyball game that a bunch of comics play in. But I was never that close to the guy. But when I find out, found out what he did, I, I called him out on Twitter a year and a half before it went public. That came public like what, fall, October-ish of 2017? So like it was around January, February, I believe of 2016, I was like, I called him out on it. I'm like, I, I, this is bullshit. When I found out about it, I was like, I called him out. I was, I was so offended. I was like, this guy makes me so mad and everybody thinks he's such a fucking great, oh, he's such a genius comedian. I called him out and I wasn't even that close with him. If I was really good friends with him, I would have confronted him first and foremost. I've said, is this fucking true? Is this true? That's what I would have done. And that's like the smallest example compared to this. If a friend of mine was convicted of having sex with a minor, I'd be like, what the fuck? We're done. Fuck you. You're not the guy I thought you were. All my friends, like my really handful of really close friends, I could vouch for them. And if I were to find out something like this, I would be like, what? I wouldn't say, hey, it's inappropriate for me to be seen with you. <laughs> and I had a number of people cancel me in both directions, either to go and see him or not to go and see him. And I took the judgment call that because this was... Um, serious um, and uh, I felt that doing it over the telephone was the chicken's way of doing it. I had to go and see him and talk to him. Um, and I went to see him uh, and I was doing a number of other things in New York at the time um, and we had an opportunity to go for a walk in the park and that was the conversation um, coincidentally that was photographed which was when I said to him, I said, look, because of what has happened, I don't think it is appropriate that we should remain in contact. And by I don't think it's appropriate that we should remain in contact. Mutual agreement during that walk in the park. Mutual agreement. We decided that we would part company and I left, I think it was the next day. And to this day, I never had any contact with him from that day forward. What did he say when you told him that you were breaking up the friendship? He was what I would describe as understanding. Um, he didn't go into any great depth um, in the conversation about what I was doing or what he was doing, um, except to say that 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 uh, uh, he'd accepted a, whatever it was a plea bargain. He'd served his time um, and uh, he was carrying on with his life, she would have mean. And I said, yes, but I'm afraid to say that, 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 that that's as may be. Um, but with all the attendant scrutiny on me, then I don't think it is a wise thing to do. Who advised you then that it was a good idea to go and break up the friendship? W w did that come from the palace? Was no, Her no, Majesty no, no, the no, Queen? No, 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 no. no, no, no. 
that came from. So there were a number of people who. I got to distance myself from the palace. That's what this whole interview is all about. <laughs> Just so we're clear, I'm distancing myself from the palace. And if I don't do a good enough job, they're going to cut me off and hang me out to dry. Who, uh, so, so some people from um, my staff, some people from um, uh, friends and family I was talking to, and I took the decision that it was I had to show leadership and I had to go and see him and I had to tell him that's it. That was December of 2010. Yep. He threw a party to He's... celebrate his release and you were invited as no, the guest go. of honour. Oh, in 2010? That there wasn't, certainly wasn't a, a, a party to celebrate his release in December, because it was a small dinner party. There were only oh. eight or ten of us, I think, at the, at the, at the dinner. If there, was a, if there was a party, then I'd know nothing about that. He, you just admitted you were there. Oh, well, there was a dinner party, but it was a small dinner party. It was just a shooting weekend. <laughs> That's like, this is like when somebody's guilty. It's like, you. why did you go to a dinner party at his house and they're trying to... He's arguing the title of the party, not that he was there. Do you notice that? It's like, <laughs> I break into your house, I, you know, smash stuff, I steal things, you know, and you go, Graham, you broke into my house, you smashed, you vandalized, you stole stuff, and you ate all my food. And I go, hey, I didn't eat all your food. Wait a minute, I had had lunch, hold on now. I had had a good lunch right before I was in your home. Here's the receipt for the lunch. So let's not, see what we're not talking about? We're not talking about how I broke into your goddamn home. Why did you have, go to a dinner party with the guy that was a convicted pedophile? It wasn't a party, it was like a shooting weekend. It was a, it was a, it was a crumpet event, it was tea, it wasn't a full dinner. Like, what the fuck? Shut up, you upper crust asshole. You were invited to that dinner as a guest of honor. Well, I was there, so there was a dinner. I don't think it was quite as, as you might put it, but yeah, okay, I was, there for a, <laughs> I was there at a dinner, yeah. Yeah, you were there at a dinner with a convicted pedophile. Explain that to me. Oh, I was there. I mean, I wasn't as you qualified. Well, oh, I'm a filthy pedophile and I'm a member of the royal family. We all should be beheaded. Just trying to work this out because you said you went to break up the relationship and yet you stayed at that New York mansion several days. I'm wondering how yeah, long. But I was doing a number of other things while I was there. But you were staying at the house of yes. a convicted sex offender. It was a convenient place to stay. There was. <laughs> You were staying at the house of a... Con I give this journalist credit. She just, she's very quiet, she's very prim and proper, but she won't, she keeps, I give her credit. She's like, but you stayed at the house of a convicted sex offender. Well, was, there's a lot of things going on. I mean, it's busy. You're right. I mean, it's not like there's a lot of other hotels and stuff in Manhattan. Manhattan doesn't have a lot of hotels. And, you know... It's like, if you're the member of a royal family, you, you gotta crash at a buddy's couch. It's not like you have the money to rent out the top floor of an apartment building or a penthouse. You, you, I, it's, it's 50 minutes of this bullshit. I mean, I mean, I've gone through this in my mind so many times. At with the end life. of the day, um, uh, uh, with the benefit of all the hindsight that one could have, um, it was definitely the wrong thing to do, um, but at the time I felt it was the, it was the honourable and right thing to do. And I, I admit fully that, 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 that my judgement was probably coloured by my um, tendency to be too honourable, but that's... Oh, he's too honourable. Oh, man. Oh, these... Royal family Brits, they're just a better class of people. They're better than we are. He's too honorable. You and I can't understand that. We're, we're filthy little rat people that don't get to fly around on pedophile uh, island jets. He's too honorable. I couldn't make, I couldn't, if I was writing this as a comedy sketch, I couldn't think of this. I couldn't think of this, I would write, that's not believable. That's too over the top. 
The audience won't believe it. They'll go, Graham, come on. I'm too honorable. You're too honorable. You're too honorable of a guy to say, hey, pedophile, we're done as friends. No, I'm not staying at your fucking apartment and coming to your dinner party. You weren't honorable enough to say that. Huh, Andrew? I'm not calling you a prince. You're not a prince to me. You're a maggot. You're a pedophile and a maggot. I don't call you prince. I don't call Trump president. Just the way it is. Because during that time, those, those few days, witnesses say they saw many young girls coming and going at the time. There is video footage of Epstein accompanied by young girls. And you were there staying in his house, catching up with friends. I never, I mean, if they were, then um, I wasn't a party to any of that. I never saw them. I mean, you have to, you have to understand that, 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 that his house, I, I described it more as a, as, a, as, a, as a, almost as a railway station, if you know what I mean, in the sense that there were people coming in and out of that house all the time. Um, what they were doing and why they were there, I had nothing to do with. So I, I'm afraid I, I can't. If I'm staying in the house of a convicted pedophile sex offender and I see women, young women, might be even underage women coming and going, underage girls, I'm not going to go, well, I don't know, it's, it's a railway station if you must, but people come and go every day. I was in, yes, it was a brothel, but there was a fax machine. I needed to make a fax. That's that. I went there for the offices. Yes, it was a brothel, but it was an office of a brothel that had an office, and a fax machine. I was faxing. That's when I tripped and fell, and my pants came off, and I happened to fall on top of a prostitute. That's, uh, I, I, my crime is I should have gotten better footwear. make any comment on that because I, I, I really don't know. Uh, another guest was John Brockman, uh, the literary agent. Now, he described really? seeing you there getting a foot massage from a young Russian woman. Did that happen? No. You're absolutely sure or yeah, you can't remember? absolutely sure. So John Brockman's statement is false? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know Mr Brockman, so I don't know what he's talking about. But that definitely wasn't you getting a foot massage from a Russian girl in Jeffrey Epstein's house. No. I don't have feet. It might seem a funny way to break off a friendship. A four-day house party of sorts with a dinner. It's an odd way to break it's up a friendship. It's a difficult way of putting it. That, that's a very um, a stark way of putting it. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, but actually, the the the... The truth of it is, is that is that I actually only saw him for about what the part the, the dinner party, the walk in the park, and probably passing um, in the passage. So you were in his home for four days. You did go to the dinner party, and you walked with him in the park. You just admitted that, just so we're clear. Because that's, you know, every time I've ever said, hey, we're done as friends to somebody, I stay at their house for four days. <laughs> every time. Every time. I was never in tramps with her. There are a number of things that are wrong with that story. One of which is that... So now, this week, we're cutting to this part in the interview where the uh, journalist brings up Virginia Roberts' sworn testimony saying that she was in a nightclub with him, they were drinking, and she had sex with him. And they're also going to reference that photo of him with his arm around Virginia Roberts and Jeline Maxwell in her apartment that was taken by Epstein. Okay, so now we're going to get into this. How he's claiming doesn't ever remember meeting Virginia Roberts at all. And tries to say that this photo was, was doctored. Is that I don't know where the bar is in, in um, Tramps. Um, uh, I don't drink. Um, I, I don't think I've ever bought a drink in Tramps. 
uh, whenever I was there. Do you remember dancing at Tramp? So you, wait, you just said you don't remember the bar is there, but you don't ever remember buying a drink. So, but you bought something there, like a soft drink or something, and you bought that at the bar. We used to, I'm friends, you know, with cops and I know some investigators. That's why they just keep asking questions. That's how you find someone lying. No, that couldn't have happened because the date that is being suggested, I was at home with the children. You know that you were at home with the children. Mm. Was it a memorable night? On that particular day that, that, that um, uh, we now understand is the date which is the 10th of March. Uh, I was at home. Uh, I was with the children. I'd taken Beatrice to uh, a Pizza Express in Woking for a party at, a, I suppose, sort of four or five in the afternoon. Um, and then, because the Duchess was away, we have a simple rule in the, in the, in the family that, 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 that when one's away, the other one's there. I was on terminal leave at the time, um, from the, the Royal Navy, so therefore I was at home. Why would you remember that so specifically? Why would you remember a, a Pizza Express birthday and being at home? Because going to Pizza Express in Woking is an unusual thing for me to do. A very unusual thing for me to do. I've never been, I've only been through Woking a couple of times um, and I remember it weirdly distinctly. <laughs> He's claiming he remembers getting pizza March 10th, like whatever it was, 15 years ago. Ooh. Do you guys remember that time you went and got pizza 15 years ago? March 10th? I can even, I can even buy like, I'm a member of the royal family. I don't go get pizza. But you would remember the date. I can remember some stuff that was out of something out of my normal that I've never really done before, but I can't tell you the date. There's only a couple of dates I really remember in my life, right? <laughs> April 27th, 2006, that was when I was on a helicopter uh, in Afghanistan and we came under fire. We almost got blown out of the sky. I remember that date. remember, <laughs> you know, I can't even tell you the days I graduated. I can remember specific, like, like cool events in my life and the rough time period, but I can't tell you the exact date of stuff like that. The exact date I had pizza. <sighs> as soon as somebody reminded me of it, I went, oh yes, I remember that. But so I have no recollection of ever meeting or, or being in the company or the presence. So you're absolutely sure that you're at home on the 10th of March. Yeah. She was very specific about that night. Mm -hmm. She described dancing with you no. and you profusely sweating <laughs> and that she went on to have bath, there's a, there's possibly. A, there's a slight problem with, 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 with the sweating um, because uh, I, I have a peculiar medical condition, which is that I don't sweat, um, or I didn't sweat at the time, and that was, oh, actually, yes, I didn't sweat at the time, because I um, ha had suffered what I would describe as an overdose of adrenaline in the Falklands War when I was shot at. Uh, and oh, the war vet card. He lost his sweat glands in the war, everybody. So we know now that this March 10th, he had pizza and then he lost his ability to sweat in the Falklands War. And he's too honorable. Boy, this is so believable to me. It's so believable. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm just, I lost my sweat glands in the war. I remember that one time I had pizza and I'm too honorable. It gets better. I simply, it, it, was, it, was, it was almost impossible for me to, to, to sweat. And it's only because I have done a number of things in the recent past that I'm starting to be able to do that again. So I'm afraid to say that, 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 that there's a medical condition that says that I didn't do it, so therefore... Is it possible that you met Virginia Roberts, dined with her, danced with her in Tramp, had sex with her, 
on another date? No. Do you remember meeting her at all? No. Do you know you didn't meet her, or do you just not remember no, meeting her? No, I have. I, I, I don't know if I've met her, but no, I, I have no recollection of meeting her. Because she was very specific. She described the dance that you had together in Tramp. She described meeting you. She was a 17-year-old girl meeting a senior member of the royal family. Never happened. She provided a photo of yes. the two of you together. Yes. Your arm was around her waist. Yes. You've seen the photo. I've seen the photograph. How do you explain that? I can't. Because I don't, I have no, I, again, I have absolutely no memory of that photograph ever being taken. Do you recognise yourself in oh, the photo? Oh, yeah, it's pretty mm. difficult not to recognise yourself. Your friend suggested that the photo is fake. I think it's, uh, from the investigations that we've done, you can't prove whether or not that photograph is uh, faked or not because it is a photograph of a photograph of a photograph. So it's very difficult to be able to, to, um, to, to prove it. But So now we're disputing whether the photograph is real or not. You see, this, this is like defense counsel when you've got a guilty client. I, I don't remember that photograph ever being taken. But it's possible that it was you with your was, arm around That's me, but, but whether that's my hand or whether that's um, the position, I, I, but I don't, I have simply no recollection of a photograph ever being taken. The world has now seen the photo that yep. Virginia Roberts provided, taken by Epstein, we understand, in Ghislaine Maxwell's house. Well, here's the problem. I've never seen Epstein with a camera in my life. I think it was Virginia Roberts' camera. She said a little Kodak one that she lent to Epstein. He took a photo and your arm well, is round her listen, waist. I don't remember, I don't remember uh, that photograph ever being taken. I don't remember going upstairs uh, in the house because that photograph is taken upstairs. Um, and I'm not entirely convinced that, I mean, that is, that is what I would describe as, as, as me in, in, that, in that picture, but I can't, we can't be certain as to whether or not that's my hand on, on, on <laughs> her, uh, whatever it is. Whose hand is it? Left side. You think that... Because I, I have no recollection of that photograph ever being taken. So why would somebody have put in another hand? You think it is you next to her in the photo? Oh, it's definitely me. I mean, that's a, that's a picture of me. It's not a picture of, I don't believe it's a picture of me in London, because when I go out, to, when I go out in London, I wear a suit and a tie. That's what I would describe as, those are my travelling clothes if I'm going to go, if I'm going overseas. So there's a, there's a, I've got a, plenty of photographs of me dressed in, 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 in those sorts of, that just, sort of kit, but not there. Just to clarify, sir, you think that photo has been faked? I don't, we don't need to question him anymore. I'm good. Makes sense. He had pizza. He knows exactly when he had pizza, March 10th. Uh, he lost his sweat clans in the war. Um, and he wouldn't be caught dead without a sport coat and a tie. I'm sold. That's all the evidence you need. <laughs> Unbelievable. They, the, uh, this is the audacity of the ruling class. He thinks this bullshit's gonna fly. I'm a member of the royal family. I'll come up with some nonsense about, oh, I don't ever wear, I have a traveling kit. I don't wear those kind of boorish clothing that the unwashed masses wear. I'm always in a suit and tie. I don't, I lost my sweating in the war. I'm too honorable. I'm too honor, I'm so honorable. I remember the one time I had pizza. And that is why I would never ever be caught wearing uh, just a shirt without a tie and a sport coat in London, no less. If we were on safari, I can imagine. Of course, when I went to the pizza parlor on March 10th, I distinctly remember having my sweat glands on that day and that day only. I'm so honorable, I decided to sweat in the pizza shop to show the workers of the pizza shop that I am one of them. Sweating, dirty people making this filthy pizza crust that I was buying for my children. I remember that day, of course. Jeffrey Epstein didn't own a camera. We didn't use cameras. I, 
that was supposed to be taken upstairs. Well, I had my feet was lost in the war. And I had them replanted uh, just days after that photo was apparently taken. Now I have no physical evidence of this. I'm too honorable to uh, keep track of any of my movements and behaviors. So I believe that this, I should stand and acquitted uh, uh, for the charges accused and simply say that I am too honorable of a pizza-eating, tie-wearing uh, member of the royal family. I can't. Uh, there it is, folks. There's, if you want to watch the whole thing, I had to keep stopping. I would stop it to periodically laugh and then be outraged. Be outraged. And let's be clear here. You fly on Epstein's plane. Trump's flown on it. He was on it once. Hillary Clinton was on it twice. Bill Clinton was on it 26 times. He's been on it. He's been to the island. You've been to his island. You've been on his plane. You fucked children. You're awful. I can make, I'm, yes, I'm making fun of him, but I am not making light of what has happened to all of these girls, some of them now women. I want this investigation opened back up. He needs to stand trial, not in some pre-planned interview in Buckingham Palace. I'll give that a journalist credit. She did ask some strong questions, but she still works for BBC, right? So the BBC, who funds the BBC? The British government funds the BBC. So Buckingham Palace leans on some people. That interview goes a little soft. It's still a pretty decent interview. I'll give her credit, but come on. Why isn't he should be arrested? and facing questioning and charges by the FBI, and so should Jeline Maxwell. So should any of the people listed, all you, you have a sworn deposition by Virginia Roberts, and then you have physical evidence like flight records and video footage. So I wanna know, I wanna know what was captured when they see, where's the, what was seized? Where's his black book? What's on all these hard drives? Is there video footage of him having sex with children? Then we need, we need him prosecuted. Do not let this go. Do not let this go. While this is fun, you can make fun of these jackasses and I'm gonna make a little fun of them. Let's not forget here that hundreds, if not thousands of children were abused at the hands of Epstein and people like this and Bill Clinton and Trump, and Bill Richardson, and Les Wexner, the head of uh, uh, Len or whatever, the guy that runs Victoria's Secret, and Jeline Maxwell, and all of the people, the pimps. The interview with Virginia Roberts, watch that interview. Well, she's like, everybody was in on it. Limo drivers, doctors, butlers, all these people knew and did nothing, not to mention all the powerful people like this. I'm done with the ruling class. I wanna take them out. Because the ruling class is the reason why we don't have good jobs. The ruling class is the reason why the environment is collapsing because they've had to squeeze every nickel out of the natural resources. The ruling class is why there's war all over the place. The ruling class is why there's people dying because they don't have health insurance. The ruling class is why there's homeless people. The ruling class is why there's wars, why there's debt. And now we're finding out that the whole ruling class is involved in, in raping children and trafficking them around the planet. So, Andrew, I don't believe a word you said. You filthy, pedophile piece of shit. And fuck you, and fuck the royal family, and fuck the Republicans, and fuck the Democrats, fuck the entire ruling class. I'm so done with them. Open up this investigation right now right now. Indictments for Andrew, indictments for Jeline Maxwell, indictments for Bill Clinton, indictments for Trump. Do it. Do it. Don't play partisan games and only indict this party or that party. Lock them all up. If you don't do that, FBI, if you don't do that, William Barr, then we can just assume you're pedophiles.
Thanks for watching the show, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood. I will not lie to you. I have a distinct bias on this channel. I'm a left-leaning, anti-war progressive that wants to lock up and execute pedophiles. Ruling class pedophiles, take them out. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. Go to rockman.com slash Graham Elwood. Support this channel. Because the ruling class is destroying the earth. Thanks for watching. Tour dates at GrahamElwood.com. Follow me on social media. Like, share, and subscribe.